Hello, everybody, and welcome. Oh, my goodness. You see the backdrop here. It says, I choose joy. And I am just filled with so much joy this morning to be joining all of you to be working with such a great team here in the earthly realm and in the spirit realm and to get to spend the next few hours with you over a period of 11 hours we're going to be sharing so much wonderful teaching from the spirit world learning how to connect with our own loved ones and guides so welcome the class is called personal mediumship that term dropped in on me when i was thinking of how to share a course with people and how to connect with their own loved ones you see so many of my students who have taken my other class, Serving Spirit or Making the Connection, both share the same thing, how to practice mediumship. But so many of them really don't intend to be mediums. So let's just define mediumship right off the bat. Mediumship is communicating with those who have passed, who are no longer in a physical form, but are still very much still right here. And the medium serves as the intermediary for those here in physical form who don't necessarily sense their loved ones around them. So the term personal mediumship is perfect for our goal in this class to learn how to connect directly, personally with our own loved ones across the veil. And oh, by the way, when you can do that, you can connect with other people's loved ones as well with any sentient being across the veil but that may not be your goal so our goal for this class is learn how to do it yourself without an intermediary and of course if you can connect with your loved ones you can connect with your guides who are always with you so that's going to be part of this course i'm so excited because we're going to dive into some really deep stuff which may at first, not make sense to some of you, but I know that we're planting seeds, so it's just going to be a wonderful time. So the critical point then in personal mediumship as a term, which, by the way, I googled it after it was given to me, and it just wasn't to be found on the Internet, which just stunned me. So I'm grateful for that original term given from spirit for what we're learning to do here. Uh, the critical point is you do not need an intermediary to connect with your guides, to connect with your loved ones. Certainly there are those people who have practiced it, this or have been given the ability, the awareness of the ability from birth who can serve as phone operators for us. But all of us can do this and we'll talk about it as we go along. So the most important point is that of course your loved ones are around you, they exist the same way you do as expressions of one beautiful consciousness, one field of awareness. Simply thinking about them activates this ongoing connection that you share with them. So because you're taking a class today with the intention of connecting with your loved ones, guess what? They're here with you. You may not sense them beside you, around you. I don't know if you saw that movie, uh, Ghost with Whoopi Goldberg, and she's serving as a medium. And all the loved ones in spirit are crowding around. I want to talk. I want to talk. You can imagine your loved ones like that now. So I want to start off by acknowledging them and by all of us doing that. So let's just go to our heart right now, have the belief in our awareness that what I say is true, and I guarantee you it is. Your loved ones are with you. They may be the ones that pushed you to sign up for this class. And let's, from our heart, welcome them. Just do it now with me, please. Think of those you hold most dear. Send them a big, energetic hug. And how about lots of gratitude for being here with you during this class? Because we're going to be doing some meditations and connecting with them, and we can't do it without them. So trust me, they are here and just acknowledging them opens that door to even greater experiences. I love that. So it's one thing to believe that they're here, but my goal is for you to have the personal experience, at the very least, the knowing that they are part of your life now. So 
It's not everyone's calling to be a medium and that is perfectly okay, but we all share the same tools and that is a soul. Mediumship, whether personal or for other people's loved ones, is soul to soul communication. And as I hope to share with you and to show you through personal experience, yours during this class, you are a soul here and now. The difference between this and my other courses, while the underlying fundamentals are the same, is that you're off the hook and that you don't have to pair up with anybody and prove anything to anybody. You don't have to sit with somebody and, and bring forth their loved ones. There's always a level of pressure with that, although there's also a level of, of wonder and expectancy and surprise that goes with that. So we won't be diving into the dynamics of what happens in a one-on-one -on -one reading. However, even though a lot of the teaching and the fundamentals are similar to other classes, if you have taken any of my other classes, Please don't tune out when you hear things I've taught in the past. We always hear things from where we are right now, which is always changing. You're always growing. So you will hear it in a different way. And also, there is a lot of new teaching. I know I've put that out in several emails, but the way to present some information and new practices, and of course, with me being retired military, new acronyms that I'm going to be sharing with you to help make it easier to remember the things that I'm sharing. All right. So again, my goal is to take you from hoping that your loved ones are with you, from hoping that you can sense and connect with them and with your guides to having the personal experience at the very least of having the personal experience of who you are as the pure awareness from which the story of you arises. I'm going to say that again, and there are going to be several things that I'm going to repeat like that because they're so important to understand. We're going to take you to the knowing of you as the very field of pure awareness from which you, the story with a name on it, arises. That means there are two different aspects of you, doesn't it? So already we're taking you beyond the story and into a sense of wonder. Well, if there's more than my story, what more is there? And to me, there couldn't be anything more exciting than diving into that. All right. So you are both a human and spirit. I'm going to use a lot of terms interchangeably, spirit and soul. The soul is that, that individuated aspect of spirit, but a soul is still spirit. But guess what? So is you, as, so are you as a human being spirit. They are all connected. You are also part of this one big web that connects us all. That's really important to understand. None of this communication would be possible if we were separate from the field. And then you make the connection with other unique aspects within that field, other stories that arise from the field right here through the heart, like we already did once when we said hello and welcome to our loved ones. So those points that I just made there, that you are both a human and a soul, a spirit, that you are part of one big web connecting all that is, and that you find your way to that connection, to your completeness, home with a capital H through the heart. Well, guess what? Those three points are the basis of everything I'm gonna be teaching. That's the basis of what I call the awakened way. So it's my goal that you leave here. You don't have to memorize that. You don't have to remember any of that. But my goal is for you to leave here living from a place of knowing that. All right. So the benefits of personal mediumship is that you can get answers to any question you might ask a psychic yourself. I love that. It's this, this is all about empowering you to step into your wholeness, to understand that you are part of this web of connection and therefore as an expression of this sea of pure potential and pure awareness the answers already exist in potential and 
through the heart, you already know what the answer is. So we'll learn how to access guidance and insights at any time without re relying on a psychic to get those. You can, um, you will find that you are more mindful, more present, more aware of what's going on with around you and within you. And anytime you act in a present mindful way, you can't help but be more peaceful. So I just saw in my mind's eye that picture of the commercial where they say, got milk? So I can ask you, got peace? Well, apply the teaching that we will be sharing in this class and I can guarantee you, you'll be able to find it instantly. So that's what I just got goosebumps. One of the things that I love about sharing this kind of teaching is that we may come in with the goal of connecting with our loved ones and our guides, but the fringe benefits are huge. This really is all about personal transformation. And isn't that what we all hope for? So as a result of accessing this state of peace that is always present, no matter what's going on around you, you experience divine joy. And there's a difference between human joy and divine joy, and you'll come to know that. But you also come to know that as part of this web, you are never alone. Wow. So it's not just your own loved ones who you knew here in human form who are across the veil now who are around you through that heart connection, but you have angelic helpers, angelic meaning non-physical, of a higher level, higher consciousness, who are also always around you. And boy, if I'd known that a few decades ago, maybe I wouldn't have made some of what we call human mistakes and silly errors or suffered so much. Do I suffer now momentarily as life unfolds and then very quickly drop into the awareness of who we are and find that peace? And that's my goal for all of you. All right, so that's our intro. Let me tell you now how the course will go, I hope. <laughs> I have let go of controlling things. We're going to let spirit guide this and just uh, set the intention that it flows beautifully. But we're going to start with some modules that are very necessary as foundational information before we actually make the connection. So I don't know at what point, I can't tell you at what hour in this course, before it unfolds, we'll actually connect with our loved ones. So I ask you to be patient and understand that the foundation is critical, your understanding of how and why this connection takes place. So we're going to flow with the information that spirit has given me specifically for you for this course. We'll take breaks as I'm guided. The beautiful thing about doing this through this format is you can get up and take your own breaks as you need them. You'll be, you can come back to the recording at any time, but I'm going to keep going and I will have some set breaks. So if you want to wait, probably after an hour, an hour and a half, we'll take a five minute break and do that together and then come back. But we will have a, an, a formal break after about two and a half hours. And we'll take a break for an hour, come back and do two and a half more hours. Then we'll take a much longer break to recharge and refresh and go about our human stories and then come together for that very special channeling session when the guides who've been guiding me through this session will speak to you directly through me. All right. We will answer some questions throughout, but uh, we had a much higher response to this than I expected. And I can tell you right now, I won't be able to answer everybody's question, but the lovely Bev always tunes into her guides when she reads the questions. She knows which ones have been answered many times and are already on my frequently asked question page, but her guides will guide her to also ask those that even if they're on that page need to be asked again for all of you here who might be new to this. So Bev will sort through questions that you can submit through the chat box or through um, the Q&A box as we go along. And I'll pause at the end of specific modules to take questions and answer them here as guided. And know that the answers always come fresh as I tune into my team as well. All right, let's see. Uh, as far as the timing, this is when I love that I get to practice trust. I haven't taught this course before, 
literally I have 120 pages of teaching notes to share with you. And I completely trust that my guides know that this will fit perfectly into the 11 hours of content that I've set out for you. I simply ask them, how much time do we need? And that's what they gave us. And you watch the perfection. We're going to have quite a few interactive exercises. So you get to apply things right away and try things and do activities and connect with your loved ones and guides. They don't have a specific time. We are going to flow as guided by spirit. So this is absolutely modeling the trust that I hope you get into to know that you are always guided in everything that you do in your life and just trust that guidance, trust the flow. All right. All right. So before we really dive in to the first instructional period, I would love for us all to come together in awareness of the group field that we have created by coming together here, set a clear and shared intention together. Those two elements, a shared intention and awareness of the field you're in are critical to making the connection with your loved ones. And we're gonna do that in the form of what I call an invocation, all right? So join me please and let's all close our eyes for a moment to shut out our awareness of the outer world and move our awareness to the heart area, which is a field of energy, the bridge between you as a physical being and you as pure spirit, pure being. And with your heart there, visualize yourself in a shaft of white light that connects you from the heavens, down, grounding you into the center of the earth. And in that beautiful grounded state with energy flowing back and forth, between physical and spirit, as it always does. Let's take in a nice breath of air from above and below into the heart area. And exhale nice and slowly and just release anything that doesn't serve you right now. And with just that nice breath, we're all nice and centered and present. And now picturing that light within you around the heart area, like a big sun, send your rays outward, 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 far beyond the body, as far as you can visualize them or imagine them. And imagine now every other soul who's with us now and your loved ones in spirit and your guides, the rays of each of us connecting us and creating one field of love within the vast limitless field of love. Love is lack of separation. And through that visualization, we've just become aware we are this love. Our intention for this class may be different at a unique level, but as a field, our intention is that each of us find great joy in the process hear exactly what we need to hear during these sessions. Feel uplifted by the energy. Receive an energetic transmission by sitting in this energy. Learn new things. And as a result, go forth, changed for the better, healed in some way, fortified, filled with love, and if it serves the greater good, making that connection with our loved ones and guides across the veil. In any case, trusting the process and knowing, knowing that all is in perfect order, sending gratitude out now to spirit for this experience as a whole, we affirm, and so it is. Thank you so much. All right, are you ready to roll? <laughs> I am. All right. I'm greatly aware that many of you signed up for this course because you have a beloved across the veil. And that could be a human being, or that could be a pet, that could be any creation, but it's someone you love with all your heart who is no longer here in physical form. 
and your greatest desire is to connect with them, to sense them, to know that they are not gone from your life. And in order to set the stage for that, I want to put myself back in that place that I was 15 years ago when my stepdaughter Susan, who you see over my shoulder here in her Marine Corps uniform, was struck and killed by lightning and crossed to the other side. I have to go back in my memories to remember that time because my transformation since then has been so profound that I see death in a completely different way. At the time, that was the greatest tragedy that could ever happen. And now I don't say it wasn't a tragedy, but I know that I have a choice in perspective now. And I can feel great compassion for the part of me that suffered and wailed and wanted to cross and be with her. And so I understand where some of you might be now. And I understand that most of us know very well what grief feels like. And I understand that now that's so much a part of being human, but what a joy it is to come to know we're so much more than human. And I actually feel gratitude for that pain. So to come to know that our pain is as much a part of life as the pleasure, as the joy, the human joy is a blessing. But it's also a blessing to know that that knowing comes from the knowing that death is not the end, that our loved ones who have passed truly are still right here. That is what has made all the difference in the world. I set my intention. The day I saw Susan's body in the coffin to find her, to find her spirit, because there was something in me that knew you cannot kill the spirit, whatever that was. I didn't know what it was at the time. I know now it's our true nature. And that's why you can't kill it. It is our essential nature. And whatever is essential means always here, already here, eternal. There is an aspect of you that is that, that is eternal. When we don't know that, we suffer. When we do know that, we still feel pain. But we wait it out knowing that life is like that and it goes up and down and it will pass, but there is purpose in it. The purpose of Susan's passing, well, it just happened, didn't it? But what came from that is beautiful growth, finding the peace that is still right here, that is always here, making friends all over the world and the joy that comes from serving others. So you see the perspective that comes from that pain. So I hope that in just sharing that we all know grief, that I know where some of you are, but that it leads to tremendous breakthroughs in awareness of who you are and why you're here. Hopefully that tempers some of that. And I hope to give you the hope that you too, if you haven't found it already, will experience the peace that is always here. We'll come to know the divine joy that is present even in the pain. That's why it's divine. And we'll come to know what a miracle is when the reality of life shows itself through the temporary experiences of physical life. All right. So I can guarantee you, your loved ones still exist. And that comes from what I discovered through the meditative process I began after that moment of seeing Susan in a coffin knowing in my heart, and that was my soul speaking to me through my grief, that Susan still existed, 
I set the intention of connecting with that spirit, however that was going to manifest. And so 15 years ago, I began a daily practice of using that intention to connect with her. That has opened me to a world beyond my imagining, to a connection with other people's loved ones beyond my imagining, to the utter certainty through far beyond the preponderance of the evidence that there is an afterlife, that our loved ones do survive death and that we can connect with them. And in that certainty, I hope to bring you along for the ride and help you find it as well. All right. So with that guarantee, I want to answer the frequent question I get, can anyone do this? Do you really think I can connect with my loved one? And I say yes. And the ability to do that flows along what most of you would understand as a bell curve. Of course, that's the way almost everything unfolds in human life. So as far as connecting with your loved ones, let's now go into left brain state instead of flowing with all this beautiful words. The left brain says, for those of you who like numbers, about 10 to 20% of you will have knock your socks off experiences during this class where you feel your loved ones immediately in the class. About 60% of you may have a very good experience, may know something happened, you will experience a presence, but you might be a little questioning it, or you might just know, but it might not be what you expected. Then about 10 to 20% of you, because this is life, may not have an experience during class. However, how committed are you to connecting with your loved ones? That is the question. How committed, how dedicated, how much do you believe this is possible? All of this fits into the picture. And then let's get timing out of the way. All right. Don't worry when it's going to happen. How about if we just commit to trusting that it is going to happen? All right. Don't even worry about if, because I didn't go down to 0%, did I? I just said it may not happen during this class. So that leaves it open-ended. That leaves it up to spirit. If you can't control it, it will do you no good to get upset at what happens or doesn't happen, okay? So let's just trust the flow and know that with dedication and commitment and using the tools that I share with you during this class, something will happen at some point, all righty? So I shared with you a little of my background. Let me just uh, say when I talk about left brain, left brain versus right brain, I spent most of my life using that left brain as my primary way of approaching the world. The left brain is very logical. It uses words and reasoning and thinking and proof through the physical senses. I used that in my career as a Navy officer for 20 years. I relied on that left brain. The right brain flows with reality, with what's here and now. Doesn't need words, doesn't need to, to give meaning to everything, to compare it and contrast it with things that have happened. It's just present, flowing, and knows without even giving words to things. It doesn't think, it knows. It's that state of flow and utter connection with all that is. So our goal is to find that beautiful balance. My task over the years since I retired from the Navy and discovered the greater reality is finding that balance and noticing when I'm not trusting and when I'm being too logical and thinking. So I task you with that as well to just flow and notice. I'll show you ways to do that as we go through the course. If you haven't had the death of someone close to you, really, really close so that it's one of those drop you to your knees types of passing, then learning to connect with your guides is a lovely goal as well, isn't it? And the very same processes that we use to connect with our loved ones will connect us with our guides. And again, to know that you're not alone, that they're here to answer your questions is such a gift, such a gift. 
So speaking of gifts, I just consider this work of helping people find this connection and making that connection. When I do my one-on-one -on -one readings, absolutely sacred work because it was a medium who connected us with our Susan and changed my world forever to show me through evidence she was right there in the room with us. To have the evidence so changed my world that I could never again see it the same. To find the peace in knowing that she hadn't really left us, was not dead and gone. That is sacred. That is healing. And so I just want you to feel that sacredness. And it would be lovely if you also feel it the same way. And we don't do this. I don't ever do it to entertain people or to show off or to. Well, for any other reason than service or healing others. So we'll talk about ego and what it is and where it comes from. But ego is part of the human story and we're tuning in soul to soul. And that's what I want to get you to know and feel. And when you can come at life through the soul instead of an ego, which acts the way it does because it thinks it's separate and needs to maintain its so-called autonomy. When you can get to recognize why it does what it does and set it to the side that's when life flows that's when you feel the joy and that's when you see everything as sacred and the beautiful part is that's when you see the soul in each other and come to love everybody wow wow i just felt this huge burst of love for all of you so thank you for sharing this with me and give me the chance to share that with you so let's discuss expectations real quickly so important to understand that the human side the ego has that's that separate side has certain expectations and that's normal so acknowledge that and do your best to set them aside and be open to whatever happens if you feel disappointed at any point at, at the end of one exercise or at the end of the course, that's a direct result of expectations. And that's okay. But you'll have the awareness to say, ooh, I don't like the way that feels. Oh, I'm in human mode. If I shift to soul awareness, now I trust the flow and know that it will unfold for me exactly as it will. Just like a flower blossoming. You can't speed it up. You can add the fertilizer in the water and that's what we're doing in this class. So just be aware of where expectations come from and try to temper yours and simply set the intention that the greatest good for you at the point where you are in your life is what will unfold. All righty, so. I like the fact that we won't be able to compare our experiences with others during the class. That's a challenge in a one-on-one -on -one mediumship class because you look and you say, oh, they did a reading, they did really good or I didn't do really well. So none of that this time, just hope for the best outcome for your joy. All right. All right, so that ends the preliminary foundations about why we do this work. Moving on now, we're going to talk about life after death. Let me check the time. Oh, doing great here. All right, no time. We don't need a break yet. The importance of belief and is there life after death? Yes, there is absolutely life after death. I've talked about that several times already. How do I know there is a greater reality? The evidence. in. At a soul level, we already know there's a greater reality. At a soul level, you are a part of that greater reality. You're in it now, but this outer world keeps your focus on the outer world. We'll learn how to turn that off for a little bit so we can access the greater reality. However, through intention at the human level, we can seek and get evidence of this greater reality when i speak of a greater reality it doesn't mean better it means more than this physical world 
all right? Perhaps a higher vibration. Energetically speaking, it's greater than this one and we can't access it because the brain is a filter that can only access a certain bandwidth of all of the energy that's around us. Thank goodness. Or we would experience sheer chaos right now if we had access to the entire reality all at once. In fact, my guides just reminded me that if we could access the fullness of who we really are, our bodies would just explode or implode, whichever way you want to go. They couldn't handle it. And some of you may be feeling a big vibration right now because you're being imbued with this transmission of energy throughout the course. And you're like, what is this that I'm feeling? And you may have trouble sleeping tonight <laughs> and you may have to come down from this higher energy. That's what we're talking about. And the greater reality encompasses this reality and the non-physical world. So evidence of that greater reality comes when we experience beings who are in it or we experience ourselves in it. So the way I have come to know it is by interacting with those sentient beings who are not in physical form. And I've always share evidence of that in my teachings as a way of showing you that it does exist. And so some of you will have heard some of my stories. I promise you, I'll add some new ones. So if you've heard some stories I've told before, bear with me, but just help me celebrate the magic as we do that. Certainly having my own Susan come back to me through that medium was hugely evidential. And that's what started me on this path. You can read the evidence that she shared in my book, Messages of Hope during that reading. But then others, specific others from across the veil are, just stand out in my mind, such as Wolf, who I chronicled in, in my entire book, Wolf's Message. He left absolute proof that we are souls. So if you haven't read that book and you want proof beyond a doubt that the soul knows things that don't filter into our human awareness at all times, check out Wolf's Message. It's also on audiobook and the presentation Heart Gifts on YouTube. You can look up Suzanne Giesman, Heart Gifts. Many of you are familiar with Wolf, and it's hard to read that book without having all kinds of synchronicities jump into your life as you become part of the web that we're all part of. But Wolf has left so much evidence. Another person who's been so clearly present on my path is my wonderful friend, Brenda, and Lynette's friend, Brenda, her soul sister, Brenda Baker who passed to the spirit world in May of 2018, I believe. And the very day after she passed, dropped into my awareness. I'm sitting on the couch in my recreational vehicle, my bus, and here's Brenda on the couch in her voice, having a full con conversation with me saying, I'm right here, Suzanne. I just blinked and I just woke up. So stunning to feel her mannerisms, hear her voice, within 24 hours of crossing the veil. And in brief, a story that I share in full in a presentation that's on my website on the video page, the presentation from my keynote speak at speech at the IANDS conference, I-A-N-D-S. I shared with you what she shared with me, Brenda, in that first contact, contact across the veil. She gave me one piece of evidence that again changed my world. She said to me, like my boa, and she was talking about a boa like this, the kind that you wear like this. <laughs> and I didn't realize it at the time, but that one question showed that we are all souls. She didn't give, need to give me a laundry list of, yes, I'm here and here are things you don't know about me and here's evidence about my life that you never knew. That's what I ask of spirits who come through and you can ask it of your own loved ones too. Tell me something I don't already know. She said, like my boa. And it turns out that our dear Lynette knew what that meant. It had to do with a story, which I won't tell you here. You can watch it on that video in which Lynette said to Brenda, we are all spirit beings and we're like Zsa, Zsa Gabor who wears a boa and all this fancy, uh, all these fancy costumes when she acts. No matter what costume we wear in our human lives, when we cross the veil, we take off these people suits 
and we return to our essential magnificence, boa and all. That last little bit there was word for word what Lynette and Brenda would talk about. I never heard that story, but Brenda, 24 hours after she passed, came through and said, like my boa, having never heard that story, do you see the magnificence in that message for all of us? These are people's suits. You cross the veil. You take off the costume that veils your soul's presence and step back into your innate magnificence, the soul, pure being as spirit, boa and awe. It's stories like that that I could fill 11 hours with. I want to get you to the place where you hear your loved ones in their own voice, if that's your ability, where you sense them with your very being, with your heart, and cannot deny they're here. That's what I want to get you to. But to this day, people's loved ones drop in on me, most especially if I've already experienced them in a reading or their loved ones of friends that I'm around a lot. We have dear friends, Lynn and Jeff Hollihan, who are chronicled in my book, still right here. They just visited us here in Hilton Head. See, I promised you new stories about a week and a half ago. And their son, Devin, is across the veil. I've brought him through several times for them and always with beautiful evidence. And the neat part about interacting with someone you already know the backstory about, in, in other words, I as a medium don't need to say, who are you? How did you die? What kind of work did you do? All the background story is what they want to share is things going on in their loved one's life now by way of evidence so that the loved ones know they're still part of your life. So current events are awesome evidence. So Lynn and Jeff had just arrived the night before we had dinner and the next morning they're sleeping downstairs in the guest room and I sat up here in my meditation room for my daily meditation was not expecting Devin to drop in and here he is I recognized him right away but of course he would drop in because his parents are right here you know but even more important it was his parents 39th wedding anniversary so even more reason to drop in and I just pick up my iPad and start typing his messages for them. He didn't need to prove his presence, but I always like a little bit of evidence to back up those messages about happy anniversary, mom and dad, and all the beautiful things he had to say to them. And I'll just share one little piece of evidence which was so much fun to share with them when we all got together at breakfast a few minutes later. Devin's here, of course he is is that he showed me his mom on the flight coming here to South Carolina from Arizona. He showed me her reading a book and thinking, this isn't very good, and putting it down on the plane and thinking I should give this to somebody. So I typed this all up and I sent it to them in an email so they would have a, a, a record of that, a gift, an anniversary gift from their son. And I went down and there they were having their first sip of coffee. We won't talk about what Jeff's hair looks like first thing in the morning. Oh my God. <laughs> and I said, there's an email for you from your son. And they opened it up and validated every bit of evidence. And the cool thing is when they came to the bit about the airplane, it turns out that Lynn had found a book in one of those little lending libraries we have here in the United States. People put them on trails, sometimes just a little box on a stand and people donate their books and you find one and you take one and you give one. And it's just a lovely gesture of our connectedness. And she had found one and she took it on the plane to read. And she said, this isn't very good. I think I'll just leave it here for somebody else. What does that show us? It validates what I've been telling you and what I want you to know in your heart. Our loved ones are still here, even at the most mundane moments, and especially on special occasions like anniversaries, birthdays, and holidays. And if you ask for the evidence, expecting it, they will give it to you. So I, so I share all of these stories with you and will continue to do so throughout the course to open your belief that of course there is a greater reality, that our loved ones are part of it and so are you as a soul. And since we're all souls, you can connect with them too. And it may not be clear at first, 
but it can become that way through commitment, desire, and trust. I just was told that the one piece I left out was that I'm not like one of those mediums who saw spirits my whole life. I did not know there was a greater reality. I told you I was very left brain in the military. I relied always on the physical senses, not realizing I was using a little intuition along the way. But as far as sensing spirits, never. But after Susan passed, that was the impetus to connect with the spirit world. Once I found out she was around from that medium, it became my new mission to let other people know they are here and we can connect with them. And they are trying to contact you, knocking on your head. We want to listen, but we want to learn how to do that. And I'm going to show you how to do that. However, it didn't just open up like this for me. And I'm suddenly like Whoopi Goldberg, sensing everybody around me. It has been a step-by-step -step process of growth, like a spiral, learning things and improving, going up and then reaching a plateau and then going up. But that spiral expands and expands with breakthroughs to new levels all the time. And that's what makes it a joyous journey. <laughs> I've had some tremendous breakthroughs just since the start of the year. Two of them, new levels. This class is the result of a new level of trust. And with each new level, new, more clarity, more joy. My friends, it never ends this journey. So don't think you're going to find the end result here and that's it. And your connection is going to be open. Job done. No, please see it as this beautiful journey that you're in for the long term eternally with yourself as spirit and with your loved ones. They are helping you all along the way, but enjoy. Ha, ha, ha. This one right here says, enjoy the journey. The team just said to me, what does it say right behind you right there? I want you to enjoy the journey, but I also want to, you to appreciate it's not always painless because it's the moments when you stumble. It's the moments when you don't get what you want that you will grow from if you see that as a learning opportunity. So again, any disappointment you feel is an opening to find out why that didn't happen. What is holding you back? So I will admit to you, my clarity that I have now is a result of a 15 year journey. I was just told, no, it's a lifelong journey. <laughs> You've been doing this, but you didn't realize you were being prepared. All of you have been being prepared for this moment right here, right now. And we don't know how it'll unfold. And that bit of mystery is what adds to the fun and the joy, the not knowing, the sense of wonder. If you knew how far you could go with this or how it's going to unfold, that would take that element of surprise and wonder out of it and you might not work so hard. You don't have to work at it. In fact, that may be counterproductive as we'll discuss soon. However, I would like you to be committed to the flow and the journey and dedicated to your soul's shining ever brighter. That's what we're here for, the joy of this journey. So it doesn't matter what you achieve or don't in this life. Spirit is expressing as you for the joy of it, divine joy through the pain and through the pleasure, all right? So just to tell you, I work at this. Oh, they said, don't use that word work. Okay, I enjoy this process fully. And it's because the rewards are so rewarding. Uh, the commitment pays off in love and joy and peace and connection cross the veil and with each of you. And that's my desire for you. So a little rah-rah motivation there for all of you. All right, let's see. So belief is so important. Understanding who you are is critically important. And we're going to get into that. So belief being the number one key to connecting with your loved ones. The next one is setting a very clear intention. 
And I hope that that's your intention for this course, to learn who and what you are at a greater level. If you already have a good sense of who you are as a soul, trust me, there are layers and layers and layers of human conditioning that come off and off and off because this path is about revealing the light that's already within you that may have been covered up by layers of human conditioning, the ego. And it's so much fun when you think you've learned it all and you realize you haven't and another layer comes off. Um, fun isn't always without its pain. <laughs> That's why I pray always, may my lessons be as painless as possible. May I recognize them before it hurts. And may I then work to overcome that conditioning. And then in addition to belief and intention, attention, awareness, presence, mindfulness, focus on what is going on within and without from moment to moment. Much more on that later. All right, so we need to retrain the brain and our conditioning to bypass the human conditioning. The brain is a filter. We get in certain habits, habitual ways of thinking and acting, and the brain actually creates neural pathways that keeps us stuck in doing and thinking things the same way all the time. The brain is perfectly created to filter out all of this energy and information that's around us so that our world is not chaotic. But as a filter, it does limit our awareness of our loved ones. Truly, the body is the veil, okay? The brain, a big part of that veiling, but you can create new neural pathways. And we do that through some of the practices we'll learn here. So. Be willing to try new things that you're going to learn this weekend. Another filter to accessing the greater reality is fear. So just think about what fears you may have brought to this class. One of them is based on the belief that this is dangerous work or you shouldn't be doing it, trying to contact the so-called dead. But they're not dead. Their physical bodies are dead. They are souls connected to the field of love, just as you are. They are shining lights, just as you are. There is lower vibration energy, and it is very much attracted to fear. So I'd like you to just focus on being the light, radiate that out, and set the clear intention that only the most positive experiences come to me. And if anything raises the awareness of fear within me, I We'll look at that without fear. I know it will flow through me and I will take the lessons that that brings to me. You may also always practice what's known as the law of personal responsibility. And anytime you may sense a presence that makes you uncomfortable, you assert yourself as a soul and state, you must leave my energy field now. Only those beings of the highest vibration may interact with me. And that is your innate protection. You can do that first thing in the morning or at any time, especially before you interact with those in spirit, okay? So please don't have any fear about this practice. If you feel out of balance at any time, again, assert you are the light, call in angelic help and stand in that power, okay? All righty, let's see. Before we move on to the basics, Bev, have any questions come up that you feel we need to answer? And if I'm going to get to them soon, we'll just let you know that. Um, a very basic one that might help uh, people right now is the difference between a psychic and a medium. Excellent question. Okay. We exist as part of one spectrum of consciousness. Think of a, pi a piano with different octaves of sound. And we in the physical world would be one octave on the keyboard. And the spirit world is various octaves beyond this one. And then there may be octaves below this one, like the plant and min mineral kin kingdoms. Okay, that's a great visual. Thanks to my team right then and there. Mediums connect with any level, any octave 
on the keyboard, depending on their ability to attune to octaves beyond our physical octave. Psychics attune only to this octave, but do so without the physical senses. So they're picking up the information and the energy through a sense of knowing, through sight and sound of the senses, but it's limited to other human beings. Also animals, right? There are pet psychics. So mediums, because they can attune to the energy information and beings along the entire spectrum of consciousness are also psychic because our limited physical octave include, is included in the entire spectrum. Okay, any others, Beth? Thank you. Um, another very basic one I think that will help before we get into uh, more of the lessons is um, more about our spirit guides. Do, do we all have one? Do we have one our whole lives? Um, and do they change? Okay, great. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about that. But it's funny, they told me to keep that whole lesson on spirit guides almost to the end of tomorrow. By the way, you have a syllabus that accompanies the course. I hope you had a chance to open it. Boy, is it meaty. You're going to see what everything we're going to cover. If you didn't scroll down, it's like four pages long. Okay. And so spirit guides are at the end just because they wanted you to connect with your loved ones. And they said, we're always around. Learn those tools. You'll tune into us better. But they're talking to you all the time anyway, they say. You just don't realize that their thoughts are your thoughts. They come through as your thoughts. Absolutely, everyone has a spirit guide. They just told me they would never send a soul into this world without them. So you have helpers. You're not in it alone. You just may not sense them. It was really hard for this Navy commander to believe in spirit guides at first, but they left me no doubt they will give you signs, they will give you evidence, and I will show you, thanks to them, how to get those signs, how to get that evidence and come to trust them. But for now, I hope you can trust my assurance. You have them, you have one or two with you for life, and then you have others that come and go depending on circumstances you're dealing with in your life. All right, so we're gonna go through one more section and then take about a five minute break and come back for the rest of the morning session. So first, some basics. Afterlife or everlife? Everlife is a term that my guide Sanaya gave me, and it's so perfect because we talk about the afterlife and what does that do? What does that mean for this? What is this? <laughs> this is life. All there is, is life. But there's life in physical form and life out of physical form, but we can experience life out of physical form now. I love acronyms. Military people are trained to abbreviate things, make it easier to remember by assigning a letter to different words. And Spirit showed me that life is an acronym for love in full expression, L-I-F-E. That's what you are. That's what all that is, is because our essential nature is love consciousness, the total wholeness of all that is, the connection of very our very being. Where there is no lack of separation, you have love. It's why you look into the eyes of somebody to whom you feel utterly connected and you call that love. There's no sense of separation, okay? So the afterlife, we're going to call it that, but let's just understand life, love in full expression, never ends and is indivisible. It only appears divided up into a before and an after, a you and a me, for the experience of it and for the joy, the divine joy that arises from those experiences. So with that understanding... We'll talk about the afterlife. We're going to talk about heaven, but heaven truly is just an experience of life without a body. You can have that experience here and now. It's a state of awareness. What is heaven like? Well, it's just like here. It's a heaven of your own creation. You as a unique expression of life, love and full expression, 
are a mirror image of the entire field of love. And as such, you are self-aware and you create through the experiences you have and the choices you make. So the afterlife is an outpouring and outpicturing of your state of consciousness after you leave the body. And Brenda just went ding, ding, ding. That's why I was with you right away, Suzanne, because Brenda had a very big awakening while still in a human body. She really worked to clear out the layers of human conditioning that were blocking her light from shining. It always shines, but she talked herself out of that through self-loathing brought on by her story. Once she cleared that away before she passed, she knew there was an afterlife. She expected it. She fully expected to be talking to her friends from the other side and letting them know she was still around with evidence. And that was her immediate experience. She created that. Those who have a certain expectation about an afterlife, perhaps based on a religion, come through to me in my readings and say, I've met the Lord. Jesus greeted me. They created that. Does that make Jesus less real? No. It is a very real experience. All experiences are arisings from love and full expression. And we help to co-create those. So, In the afterlife, we are creative. If you want to be with your loved ones, you gather them around you. If your loved ones want to see you, you're drawn to them. If you want to work, you do a work that is in service to others and brings joy, but not because you have to. If you want to enjoy a berry pie for the joy of it, it appears in your hands and you get to eat it and you don't gain weight. Now that's heaven. <laughs> But I can speak about this because of the thousands of souls I've connected to with evidence who show me what's going on in the afterlife. And some of these things you can't prove, of course, because we're not in that experience right now. But when they lace it with evidence that relates to how they were in this lifetime, then we can believe it until we meet them face to face, of course. But you can see... Um, videos on my YouTube channel about what our loved ones are doing in the afterlife. Some beautiful, beautiful stories there. But I had uh, one beautiful example recently for a new story of a woman who came through to me in a reading. The, she was the mother of my client. And I said, your mother's showing me. Now I see a lot of people across the veil have a beautiful garden because they love flowers, but I have never seen anything like what your mom's showing me. She's showing me rows and rows and rows of flowers that she has around her. And there are pansies and daffodils and roses and violets. And I don't know what's up with all these flowers, but she is totally loving this. And my client said, my mother worked in a florist shop. She worked there doing the books, but she never got to be hands on with the flowers, but she loved being surrounded by flowers. So here's mom showing, hey, I'm continuing on with my same love of flowers across the veil, but now I get to be hands on. I just got goosebumps. I hope you did too. So that's how we can even get evidence of things that we can't prove. It doesn't prove it, but it's really cool because it shows you can connect into your loved ones and ask them what they're doing. And you can always set the intention that they share it with you in an evidential way. Okay. There are some people that hear about those spirits that are stuck. Now, immediately you can feel the energy go, whoom, go down when we talk about that, or they haven't gone to the light. Words carry so much meaning. So I'm gonna do my best to couch things in terms that help you understand them better. You are an expression of the light of consciousness. All there is, is the light in expression. Those who have had near-death experiences speak of seeing the light or going through a tunnel towards a light. You cannot not be in the light. 
So what has happened in cases where some medium sense people haven't gone to the light or may be stuck or earthbound? I don't care to use those terms. I believe and I have been told and my guides are saying yes right now that what happens is some souls so enjoy being in the earthly experience, they want to hang around longer than normal instead of fully immersing in themselves in the new and more creative aspects of their new state of being where they can plant flowers and travel around at will and, and instantly manifest what they want. And that's okay. Some of them may not realize that freer state of being is available, perhaps because of a way they passed or simply for, from their own belief system before they pass. And there are certain people that actually can connect while they're in physical body with those who may not have realized that and say, do you realize you're no longer in a physical body? Do you, do you see and sense a greater light pulling you? All you have to do is flow with that and be part of that. You feel the peace in that. And that's my advice for you now. The light is here, flow with that. And you can have those experiences here and now too. All right, so hopefully that takes the fear out of it for you. Please understand that any being that may not yet be aware is always surrounded by guides. They're there. They're trying to get through to the loved ones. They simply, for their own soul's evolution, need to acknowledge that and make the choice to listen. That's what we do here. We make a choice from moment to moment to listen to the guidance that our guides are putting in our minds and hearts at all times and acting on that. All righty. So this is a great point with absolute perfection. Halfway through the morning session, let's just take 10 minutes, the guides say. 10 minutes to maybe walk your dogs, go to the bathroom, whatever you need. I'm going to actually set my timer. And you're dealing with a former Navy commander here who found that balance. When I say 10 minutes, I'm starting back in 10 minutes. I will see you back here in 10 minutes.